Good morning. Glad to be back covering our series of the promises of God. We are on day seven. This is going to be our last day of covering the promises right now. Uh, we've covered five a day, so at the end of this teaching, we will have covered 35, and we will actually recap all of those, and I will discuss each of those days. So like on day one, I'll share what we um the promises that we covered, etc., and go on through the days. That way, if some of those really intrigue you and you haven't heard those teachings, that you can go back and see where those are in Scripture as we shared those throughout um, our study here in covering some of the promises that are found to us in the Word. We did not cover them all. There are so, so many promises that are given to us in the Word of God. Our theme and our focus verse has been in Psalm 89, verse 34, where we talked about how God, it tells us, keeps his covenants. He keeps his promises. So he is a promise keeper. He doesn't break his promises. He keeps those. And so when we go to his word, we know that these things that we are reading and that we are covering in scripture are absolute truths. There are no ands, ifs, or buts to these. These are promises that are given to us in the Word of God by God, and He does not break His promises. So let's go to the first one today. It's going to be in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. And um, did I say 2 Thessalonians? That's where we're going to be at. Sorry if I said that wrong. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, and we're going to read verse 3. That's where we're going to find the first one today that we're going to cover. It says, But the Lord is faithful who shall establish you and keep you from evil. We have uh, covered a promise prior about God being faithful. And here in this passage, it also reminds us that God is faithful. And it says, Who shall establish you and keep you from evil. So the promise that we're going to focus on in this verse uh, even though there are several here, that God will guard us from evil, uh, that he does do this, that he guards us from evil. This is a promise that is given to us by God to his people, that he guards us from evil. Now, let's turn to Psalm chapter 33, <clears throat> Psalms 33, and we are going to read verse 4. To see our second promise today. Psalms 33 and verse 4. It says, For the word of the Lord is right, and all his works are done in truth. Uh, this is a promise that's given to us in Scripture that says that the word of God is right. So uh, we can look at these things as absolute truth. So not only does God keep his promises, but his word is right. It's accurate. It's truth. It's absolute. There's no uh, changing. Uh, there's no variables. And God gives us these absolute truths that are found in Scripture. Um, and God is faithful. Uh, so he doesn't change. He is always the same. He is steady. Um, he abides. He doesn't move. Um, now, we as people have a hard time understanding this because uh, that's not how it is for us. We, we are not absolute. We do change. Um, and we are flesh, so we do make mistakes. But God does not. God is absolute. And he is uh, only faithful and he is only truthful and his word is right. Uh, the only variables that can come about as far as Scripture is concerned is we as people. But as far as God himself, uh, there are no variables that make it invalid um, or make it um, untruthful because his word is true. Um, so we as people are... Uh, are, are um, we we fluctuate, we move, our minds change about things um, through, as we go throughout life. Uh, and that's because we are not perfect. Sometimes we, you know, don't know everything. Uh, but God does, and God is faithful and true, and his word is right. 
That is a promise that's given to us in Scripture. Now, we can go to the third promise we're covering today, and that's in Titus. <clears throat> Titus is there um, towards the back part of the New Testament. It's one of those tiny little books. We're going to read um, Titus 3, 5 through 7. It says, Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This promise for us that we see here, uh, there's multiple ones, but the one that we're focusing on today is that we are heirs of God and his kingdom through Jesus Christ. We are heirs. We are heirs to this kingdom and we have been given eternal life. That is the promise we're focusing there in Titus 3 verses 5 through 7. Now we're going to stay in the New Testament and go back a few uh, books and go over to Romans chapter 8. And we're going to read just a couple of verses here in Romans 8. <clears throat> we're going to read verses 10 and 11. And it says, And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. This is a, this is a promise that's given to us in scripture that Christ lives inside of us. As Christians, he lives inside of us. So think about this. Um, we, we speak about it as Christians often, you know, the spirit of God is inside of me and lives inside of me. But here's the absolute truth that we are able to see this in Scripture. Uh, so it's not something that you've now been told, but now it's something that you've seen in the Word of God, which is our absolute truth, right? God doesn't break His promises. Christ lives inside of you. He lives inside of, of me as a Christian. If you are a child of God, you are an heir to the kingdom. Christ lives inside of you. Now let's look at this last and final fifth promise that we're going to focus on today, which is our 35th promise that we've covered in this series. So it's the, um, it's the last one that we're going to cover in this series. Go over um, towards the very latter part again of the New Testament in 1 Peter uh, in chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2. It's another small book there. 1 Peter 2, we're going to read verse 9. It says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Now, it gives us several promises here, and it also gives us something that we should be doing. It says we should be showing forth the praises of of him who hath called us out of darkness unto this marvelous light of Jesus. Jesus is the light of the world, and here we are. He lives inside of us as his people. He lives inside of us. We have an eternal life that's given to us because we are heirs of God. But here is that, that fifth promise we're going to focus on today, which is this royal priesthood that we are. Did you realize your royalty? Because you are Christian, you are of the kingdom of God. Therefore, you are Christ. Uh, you are Christ um, begotten. You're, we are begotten because of Jesus. We are made uh, new. We are made a new creature. And we are heirs. Uh, we are family. We're heirs to the throne of God. And uh, this is a royal priesthood that is given to us. Now, this is a current status, and this is what we all really need to understand, is that this is not something that is going to be lived out one day in heaven. You are a royal priesthood now. This is what God considers you because you are heirs to the throne, and therefore his royal priesthood is walking about on this earth right now. Uh, as children of God, you are heirs of God. And you have the Spirit of Christ living inside of you. 
and you are a royal priesthood. Isn't this beautiful? Uh, these are truths that are just found here in the Word of God. They are absolute. So we're going to read through the five, again, that we covered today, and then we're going to read through all 35 here. So the ones we covered today was that you will be guarded from evil as a child of God, and that his word is right. You are heirs of God through Christ. Uh, Christ lives in you. You are royalty. You are a royal priesthood. Now let's cover all 35. And um, as I cover these, um, if, if there's some that stand out to you, I'm going to mention the days that we covered them. Um, then go back to those if you didn't hear those in teaching when we covered those truths that we found in the Word of God. You can go back to those teachings. Uh, they don't say promises of God day one, promises of God day two, and so forth. So today is promises of God day seven. So we're going to cover all 35, but here we go. So on day one, we covered five promises that says he will never leave you. He will help you. He will keep you in peace. He will teach you and he will give rest to your soul. On day two, we covered that he will fight for you. He will rescue you. He will work all things for good. He will give you long life and he will give you strength. On day three, we covered that he will give you wisdom and he will give you power to resist the devil and the devil will flee. This is a promise that he will cleanse you of all unrighteousness and cleanse you of all sin. He will heal your land and he gives eternal life. On day four, we covered that he will outgive us, that we cannot outgive him. He will outgive us. He answers prayers of faith. He will supply all your needs. He will comfort you, and he will give you the desires of your heart. On day five, he is forgiving and good. He promises that if you teach your children to walk in faith, they will, when they are old, they will not depart from it. He will not remove your name from the Lamb's book of life. The Lord is a stronghold and he gives good gifts to his children. On day six, which was our last teaching before today, we learn that he will bring us out of darkness. He will heal all your diseases. He will answer anything. His love exceeds all. And he will open doors. And today's again. He will guard you from evil. His word is right. You are heirs of God. Christ lives in you, and you are a royal priesthood. I hope that you've enjoyed uh, today's teaching, and I've, um, I hope you've enjoyed this series. It has been a blessing to me just to meditate and think about these promises that are given to us in Scripture and how they are absolute. They are truth. Thank you for joining, and I hope that you all have a blessed day. Tomorrow we will begin uh, either a new series or just a new teaching. Um, not sure what we're going what we're going to be doing just yet, but we are going to uh, finish here today the series in um, the Word of God, covering the promises of God. God bless you all.